Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 6th, and right now we are looking at the low-level water vapor loop today. You can see BC, Washington, Oregon here. You can see the ridge of high pressure protecting us from the storms out here across the Pacific Ocean, but the Gulf of Alaska trough is going to get rolling here over the next few days and start to bring some systems into our area as we go through the early and mid portion of this week. But right now we've got some nice warm weather expected for the next couple of days across much of the region, warming up all the way out to the coastline here. A little bit of fog this morning, We'll take a look at that here. It looks like it's pretty thin. You can kind of see it across some of the Puget Sound and maybe up straight at Georgia there and the Willamette Valley a little bit. But it looks like it's burning off pretty quickly here. And we got some offshore component going on here. So that should continue to burn off as we go through the morning hours. Now, looking at SeaTac yesterday, 67 degrees, a couple degrees above average. No precipitation. Of course, that's going to change. We go through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday coming up here. But yeah, not bad days coming up here, folks. And we're going to warm up into the 70s probably today and tomorrow for some of the Seattle area. All the way up the coastline today, even places like the Oregon coast might get up into the 80s on the immediate coastline. Very nice. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10% off. It's always much more exciting to watch this weather roll in when you've got a nice weather system. Uh, at your place of residence stores all the data for you in the cloud as well now this is looking at the european last night's run there is the 06z you can clearly see the ridge of high pressure over the pacific northwest gulf of alaska troughing gets going here quite nicely though as we go through this weekend it starts to spread some rainfall over us on the day monday and then another system trying to get a little bit closer towards the washington oregon coastline vancouver island there as we go through tuesday and wednesday so definitely something to watch here we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail as we go through the video today gfs something similar there of course with the ridging breaking down and then eventually Eventually, that Gulf of Alaska troughing, swinging some precipitation through the region there and getting some pretty good agreement on that secondary system right off the Washington of Vancouver Island coastline there as we go through Tuesday. And then that troughing kind of moving inland after that. Let's go ahead and scroll out a little bit more and see what Fantasy has. You can see that GFS even showing another ridge trying to build over the area. So we may warm up again here as we go towards the end of next week. But you can see that troughing pretty close by here. So the confidence in that forecast is not quite high just yet. We'll watch that as we go. You can see maybe a fantasy ridge and some fantasy storms over the Gulf of Alaska if you look out far enough. Now, looking at 80 meter wind speed on the left here versus 850 millibars, this is 5,000 feet temperatures on the right. So it kind of shows you the offshore flow here. And then you can see the very warm temperatures aloft. And you can see the offshore flow, that easterly wind component, making its way all the way out across some of the coastal areas and over the ocean. But look at how this changes up here as this next system rolls in here. That very warm air aloft goes away. System rolls in, frontal system there as we go through the day Monday. And then you can really see us cool down here aloft with that next system getting pretty close to the northwest tip of the Washington coastline. There could bring some breezy conditions with it as well, as you can see on the 80 meter wind speed there. Now, taking a look at 850 millibar temperatures, what this is showing is the temperatures at 5,000 feet kind of shows you the extent of the thermal trough all the way up north across Vancouver Island. And of course, that thermal trough means warm weather all the way out to the coastline here, offshore winds, compression winds off the higher terrain are what's warming us up. And you can see that thermal trough exists all the way through Saturday morning. Then things start to change a bit here, as you can see. It kind of pushes off to the east and then the cooler air aloft starts to roll in here with that frontal system and then the next storm here as we go through tuesday right off the washington coast a definitely chillier air aloft and you'll feel that at the surface as well as we drop temperatures off off by 10 15 degrees for some areas now looking at the sea level pressure map here you can see the high pressure over the interior and it wants to flow from high to low so it comes down through the gaps and over the terrain compression winds form this a subtle feature known as the thermal trough and so that's what's going on and put that into motion and you can see that go away and then you can see uh, the frontal system out here as we go through the day monday and then the next system that tries to get close to vancouver island the washington coast we go on the day tuesday so that could be some breezy conditions there as well definite pattern change incoming here for the pacific northwest national blend of models this is the daily two meter max temperature so look at today you're talking about some mid 80s possible along the immediate oregon coastline there all the way up to the washington coast look at this Quilute up there, La Push Forks. You guys are going to be nice and warm today. Gradual cool down tomorrow, and then Sunday, you'll start to feel that cool down a bit more. Monday, even more so. And then by Tuesday, the entire region will be much cooler as we start to get these systems rolling through the area. And we drop the temperatures back down towards 60 on Tuesday and some low 60s out there on Wednesday. This is Seattle Tacoma backing off the precip on this first uh, system a bit here. The secondary one now showing a bit more here, still showing an inch of precipitation in about a 24 hour period as we go through two. 
Tuesday. We'll continue to watch that, but you can see the dry conditions up until that point there with the ridge of high pressure over top. Quilly, something similar there as well. Some of these uh, solutions here are quite juicy with 1.8 inches in a 24-hour period there on the latest European model. Tillamook all the way down the Oregon coast. Going to get some precip out of this as well, as you can see. And if you want the really rainy stuff, go up to, out to Southeast Alaska there. Look at Juneau International Airport. A couple nice rounds of precipitation up there. Atmospheric reverse pointed into the area. So thought I'd throw that one in there. Boise expecting a bit here too as we go on in through the mid portion of this week. And same thing for Spokane. You can see there's still some pretty good discrepancy on what kind of precipitation amounts here. Usually lesser, of course, rain shadowing and whatnot going on over there. This is looking at the European 06Z run. So you can kind of see that ridge of high pressure keeping us dry there. We go through the day Sunday, you can see some of those clouds probably going to be moving in at this point. This is just showing precipitation here, but you can kind of imagine that the cloud shield is in advance of this frontal system. Moves in, and then you can see that next secondary system as we go through the day. Tuesday approaching the Washington coast again could bring some breezy conditions with it. But... We'll, we'll look at that here as we go in a little bit more detail over the next few days as well. We're also going to look at the UW model here in a moment. But you can see maybe some blustery conditions with that secondary system. There are still a few ensemble members that show some higher gusts up over 40 miles per hour. But nothing to get too concerned about just yet. We have a couple days to watch it. And this was last night's European model. And you see the Zero Z run goes way further out, about 15 days. And there are some fantasy windstorm forecasts out in some of these ensembles here. But nothing to get worried about at all. This is Hoku. We can see some blustery conditions potentially coming in here also. Now looking at the UW model, this one shows 925 millibar temperature. So it kind of shows that thermal trough feature, the nice warm air just off the surface. And then you can see the gradient tighten here as we go on into the day Monday and that storm system move up towards Haida Gwaii there. Some breezy conditions for Vancouver Island. Frontal system rolls to the area. We cool things down. And there goes that secondary system. So you see the UW model actually has us moving right over Western Washington. Pretty tight gradient on the south side there. So you would notice that there'd be some blustery conditions you might gust up over 40 miles per hour in some of the interior areas if this were to occur of course we've got a few days to watch that though so nothing to get too excited about just yet now looking at the six to ten day temperature outlook above average for much of the west here six to ten day precipitation slightly above average here across some of the west coast of course we'll get a much better idea of what's coming as we go day by day this european and actually the european ensemble mean yes last night's run 060 goes out 144 hours so this is looking at wednesday night you can see what precipitation is expected between now and wednesday and of course it's going to start sometime during the day monday you can see maybe up towards an inch for seattle better along the coastal ranges cascades western bc and if you really want the heavy stuff go up towards southeast alaska but yeah a couple uh interesting systems rolling through here bringing some precipitation hopefully helping out with some of the dry conditions here across pacific northwest this is looking at integrated vapor transport this is the uw model you can see the ridge of high pressure atmospheric river going into southeast alaska then the deep storm comes up towards haida Gwaii there push that frontal system through here and the reason why we're not too concerned about this is that we're early in the year these atmospheric rivers are largely beneficial at this point and this one is pretty progressive as you can see it moves through and a little bit better of an atmospheric river maybe into the oregon coast of the secondary one but not a big deal this is all beneficial at this time of year we need the rainfall so there's really no interesting concerns as far as flooding and you can kind of see often of the extended interesting atmospheric river looking uh, feature moving into western bc and southeast alaska there now looking at that the european model kind of showing some um, a weak moderate atmospheric river activity but again this is all beneficial at this time of year now looking at the drought monitor here uh uh, I just wanted to point out a few things here. So, you know, the, the drought is kind of a normal process of what goes on. You're going to get drought from time to time, no matter where you are. It's just kind of a normal process here. So I don't, people get too alarmed when you see these drought conditions, but there are ways you can look into things a little bit further. And they mention the caveats here on the U.S. drought monitor here. And they talk about, um, let me point it out here. Um, Urban water systems generally have diverse water supplies and can keep water flowing in both dry and wet periods here. So they mention stuff like that. And there's all kinds of good information in the drought monitor if you want to know how they break things down as well. And you know, it's not just rain and snow. You can't just throw a whole bunch of water all of a sudden on an area here and expect just drought to be gone here. So uh, precipitation and snow amounts can be kind of misleading here. And again, there's a lot of good information here on the drought monitor. You can see the vegetation drought response. You see across the Pacific Northwest here, we're not doing too hot. As you can see, we We've got some pre-drought stress, moderate, severe, and there's probably a little bit of extreme even mixed in there. And from what I've noticed, this is not a scientific, you know, 
very scientific of me, but uh, when I walk around, I notice a lot of pine trees have started to die and there's a lot, it seems like there's a lot of stress on some of the vegetation here. That's just kind of my, um, this kind of my observation here. And when I, it, it, just the few couple of breezy conditions we've had, 27 miles per hour and 31 miles per hour, we've brought down four pretty big trees, portions of trees here in the park nearby my house that were previously stressed as well. Uh, but yeah, anyway, just thought I'd point that out. This is the vegetation drought response. And you can actually look at the drought impact reporter dashboard here as well. And they talk about, you know, um, some of the watersheds have only received 78 inches, whereas uh, they usually receive up to 26 inches of rain between May and September. So yeah, just a heads up. You guys can check this out in a little bit more detail if you want to know more about these drought concerns out there as well. And then they point you to some of the media stories that, uh, you know, that show some of these conditions. But anyway, let's talk about the eclipse here briefly as well. I mean, uh, We'll look at the weather here as we go day by day. Of course, you know, if you can hold longer, you can hold off with your forecast here on the eclipse, the better it's going to be. This is the annular eclipse. So the moon does not block out the sun completely. And you can see it about 9.15 a.m. off the Oregon coast, 9.20, 9.25 as it moves across some of uh, central and southern Oregon and through Nevada here. Now, looking at that, at about that time in the European, you can see the infrared satellite imagery, a weak system kind of nudging its way in here. So... Maybe this will change. You know, we've got plenty of time to look at it as of right now, but you kind of see that weak frontal system spreading some clouds out there might be just enough to block a lot of that eclipse viewing. The GFS is showing a little bit more uh, of a stronger system here as we go towards Northern California and Southern Oregon there. So this could be spreading more clouds. This is total cloud cover and percentage about the time the eclipse would be occurring. But the good news is we have plenty of time. You know, these systems can back up or they can speed through and we can get some clearing here. And even when there is a system rolling by sometimes early in the morning or late in the afternoon you can get a period of clearing so we'll watch that here as we go over the next few days anyway uh, hopefully i didn't get in too much of a route there on the drought monitor or, or you know the palmer index or whatnot out there but anyway you guys can look into that for yourselves you know i i don't do a lot of time studying drought conditions i just know that it is a natural process of our environment it's nothing to get too concerned about but at the same time here you want to listen to the experts and what they have to say and always you know Look, look, look a little deeper into what they're talking about here. Uh, but anyway, um, hope you guys are liking these videos. I got a little a slider down there. Uh, let me know what you guys think of it. I'm going to put some of the things I'm talking about during the uh, video here so you can kind of uh, know what to expect as we go through the video on a daily basis. Check out the new channel, California Weather Watch. Uh, like and subscribe over there if you would. Let's get that channel going. I'm going to eventually stop the California videos on this page and I'll put them over there. I'll try to post educational videos to both channels. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Enjoy that nice weather over the next few days and hopefully we can get some nice storms rolling through here and help with the dry conditions across the area. But anyway, I will talk to you guys tomorrow and I'll see you then.